glad of the, the grace of God. Help us up till now. Uh, I'm glad the Lord is on my side. I'm glad that I've got him to go talk to when I'm in trouble. And I'm glad, Eddie, that I serve a God that's never too busy to listen to me. Glad that I serve a God that won't, when I'm in trouble, he won't say, well, I, I, I've got something more important going on. Come back later. He's not that way. And I, I'm glad that he's not. A lot of times I've been too busy for him. He had asked me, you know, to do something, Eddie, or move on me to do something, and I want to do something else. Uh, but I'm glad that he's God, and he's not, he's not like we are. You know, he, he makes time to help us and he, he he just showed his love so many times. It seemed like this scripture been on our heart about all week and just been praying, you know, and I don't know that uh, some of it we've we've preached on and testified about different things. Some of it maybe we've not. <clears throat> and I just pray and you know that the Lord would just help me to understand it like he wanted me to and that way I could bring it out the way he wants it brought out it would help somebody we get up beat the wind for 20-30 minutes not help nobody but we can get in the spirit for just a few minutes and hit an edify Amen. that's what I want I want to get in the spirit and help somebody over in James the, the 5th chapter 13th verse give you time to get there James 5 and 13. <clears throat> I appreciate the Lord tonight. Bill was singing, He is mine. I'm so glad that He is. Amen. He's my Savior tonight. He's my King, my Deliverer, my help. Yes, he is. My hope, my joy, my peace. He's everything we need Him to be. I'm glad He's mine. <clears throat> James, the fifth chapter, the 13th verse. So is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing songs. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye be, may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the earth of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. Well, I got to thinking about that, Ed, and it taught, you know, Billy starting there. Uh, at the 13th verse, I guess, where we started it, talking about if anybody is among you that's afflicted, they have to pray for their sin. Yeah. I can pray for you and pray for you and pray for you, but it said, let him pray. Yeah. Let him pray. If I get myself in trouble and, and I disobey God, we just preach it like that, say it like that. If I disobey God and, and I get myself in trouble, man, I do things that I know not to do. And he puts something on me. You're wasting your time praying for me. I've got to pray for myself. I've got to pray it off myself. Like maybe George said, different at the time they sang a song, said I prayed my way out of trouble. And he said, is any among you sick? Now there's a difference of just being sick, something that got on you, and really being afflicted. If you're afflicted, God has put that on you, maybe for different reasons, whatever it might be. But it said, is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Then pray for him and all of him with all in the name of the Lord. Yeah. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. He committed any sin, they shall be forgiven him and he shall be raised up. 
Go over there and put it there. You can put all that together. I sit over at work here and I'm thinking about that. And I read it over so many times this week. Read it over at work, over and over and over. Come home and read it over and over and over. And I just pray it in my mind. You know, all week long, it seems like all day long I'll be. But I put all that together from the 13th verse all the way down. Talking about letting the elders pray over. And it said, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. And I thought all this time, I thought I really understood what that meant. And it just myself meant oh. just something that I thought in my own mind, my carnal mind. I thought I really understood what it was saying. Well, I got to searching it up. You know what it, what it really is talking about? Oh. If you're a righteous man, oh. you've got advantage over somebody that ain't righteous. And you've got a lot more better chance of touching God if you're a righteous man yeah. than somebody that ain't righteous. Yeah. Right. The effectual fervent pride of a righteous man oh, availeth much. So that tell me that if I walk up right before God, oh, yeah. and somebody that don't walk up right before God, the righteous man will get a hold of God first. Yeah. He will get a hold of God first. Amen. Yeah. Maybe that sounds a little uh, hard, a little harsh. And that's not putting anybody in there. But if I will pray and I will see God and I will live the life that he put it on me to live, yeah. then I can be a righteous man. Amen. And when I fall down on my knees to pray, oh, it will avail us much. It will avail us much. What does that mean? It means you've got an advantage. You say, now, Lord, I have done everything that you told me to do. Yeah. I've done everything, Lord. I've lived right. I've put aside everything that you told me to put aside. And I put on everything that you told me to put on. And you know that I fasted when you told me to fast. And I prayed when you told me I needed to pray. And when I even didn't feel like praying, I prayed. Thank God. Now I need you, Lord, to move for me. Because you know that I've walked up right before you and done yeah. everything that I know how to do. Yeah. Now, I've never been able to say that I've done my very best. I can always do just a little more. You know? yeah. But if you're really trying to do everything, uh, well, you fall down on your knees and pray. Yeah. It will avail us much. Yes, It'll mean something. Yes. It'll mean something. Amen. Lord, help us. May not be making sense to nobody. Yes, you are. Avail this much. I looked that word up and I got shown in it out, you know, the right biblical meaning of it, what it, you know, it was, what it would have meant back in that time, you know. Yeah. It means you've got an advantage. Yeah. Of being able to touch God and get things done over somebody that's not a righteous man. Now, we got a lot of people. I hope this don't cost nobody if it does. You're just crying. But they'll say, and I hope nobody here is gifted. But they'll say, I know God <coughs> hears the sinner's prayer. The only prayer of a sinner that God hears is a prayer of repentance. A prayer of repentance. <coughs> well, I don't believe that. That's what the Word of God tells us. That's what it tells. And I've heard people that claim to be holy and people say, I know what the Bible says, but I still believe this. And I looked at them, I said, are you calling the word of God a lie? <laughs> Thank God. Praise the Lord. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Righteous man. Of Yeah. Now you know who is going to be able to get a hold of God to me and you when we're sick. I'm talking about this sick, not afflicted sick. A righteous man or woman can get a hold of God. Yes. If we want to get a hold of God for somebody, we're going to have to live the life of a righteous man or a righteous woman. That's, That's just the way it is. If I'm not living a righteous life, Eddie, then I'm wasting my time trying to get a hold of God. Mm -hmm. If I'm slumbering around and I'm hypocritical around and I'm not doing what I know to do, I ain't going to be able to get a hold of God for you. 
I ain't gonna be able to get a hold of God for myself until I get myself lined down. Call for the elders yeah. of the yeah. church. Yeah. Yeah. That they'll pray over him, anoint him with oil yeah. in the name of the Lord. Yeah. The prayer of faith yeah. shall save the soul. Yeah. Now you're not going to be able, now listen, you're not going to be able to pray the prayer of faith if you're not righteous. You've got to be living right to get your faith to work. To really just work, work. You know what I'm saying? Now, I know it takes faith to get born again. You've got to believe. But to really be able to get a healing of somebody, you've got to be living righteous. Living righteous. Believe that. I believe that, boys. You go lay hand on somebody that's the best of them. If you're not living right, you better not lay hands on them. Right. Why? Because if you're not living like right. you know to live, they'll get a hold of you. Yeah. Uh, True. Yeah. 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 Some of them was possessed with devils in it. The disciples tried to cast them out, they couldn't do it. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Jesus asked them why they could. He said, This time coming on. By much prayer and fasting. That's right. By much prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we're going to get to the Lord of God to move on us, we're going to have to be righteous. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to be righteous. That's right. Now, if they, there's somebody tonight, if you're afflicted, I'm not saying y'all, no, I'm just saying, if you get, in, get yourself in trouble with the Lord and He's chastising you and you're afflicted or whatever, you're going to have to pray for these things. You won't have to pray for each other. That's what the word of God says. Let him pray. Let him pray. But if there's any among you see. And people will come up here and pray. I'm not just saying that. I'm just saying in prayer lines and pray. Get prayed for. They walk off still with the same problem where they must be afflicted. Not everybody's afflicted. Not everybody's afflicted. Uh -huh. Lord, how much not everybody long is afflicted. They still assign the laying on the hands of the sick. And they shall recover. But we're going to have to be righteous. Yeah. We're going to have to be righteous. Not only in the house of God, not just here. When you're at home and nobody's around. You've got to be righteous. Yeah. Yeah. At work, when nobody from church is around, when you're at work with a bunch of sin, you've got to be righteous. You've got to be righteous. If you're way back on the mountain somewhere, you've got to be righteous. Because you never know when something's going to hit you. In a blink of an eye, something can hit you. And I want to live in righteous. It's something It's something different. Um, I want to be righteous. Uh, some of the scriptures that I read through the Word of God, I can't remember exactly where it's at, but it's talking about faith, you know, in the substance of things hopeful, evidence of things not seen. Uh, evidence of things not seen. Knowing that it's there, even though you've not seen it. Uh, now, I've never looked Jesus in the face, man. I've never had. But I know that he's there. I've got evidence that he's faith and I've not seen it. Huh? I've never seen the Holy Ghost, but I've got the evidence that he's real. Yes, he is. Some people may preach it a little different than that, whatever. 
Evidence of things not seen. Substance of things hopeful. Hopeful. You know how we can get God to look at us? Now I'm not saying we tell him what he has to do. You don't tell God what he has to do. But you can live the life of a righteous man or a righteous woman. You can get down and say, oh, Lord, I'm in trouble. Something's come out of me. Sickness is hit. Troubles hit my home. Whatever it might be. But you know, Lord, that I've done what you told me to do. Amen. Yes. And I'm trying to do my best, the best that I know how. Yeah. I went to church and I worked for him when I really didn't feel like it in life. But I went anyway. Yeah. When I felt like nobody wanted me, but I went and sang my little song anyhow. <coughs> When you told me to lay this aside and I laid it aside, you know, Lord, that I tried to walk and right before you. Now I need you to move for me. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Now I need you to move for me. Yes. You know what he'll do, lady? He'll move for me. Yes. The effectual, fervent pride of a righteous man of Ellis Mothers. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'll mention, talk about myself, maybe nobody else will get tore up. Yeah. Now, if I go away a week at a time and I don't ever fall down and talk to the Lord, or I go a month or so and I don't ever fast, and I go a week or so in and I don't ever sit down and open my Bible, I'm not a righteous man. Why? Because I'm not doing what's required of me to do. When something hits my home, I got catching up to do. Yeah. Yeah. I've got catching up to do. Oh Lord. You can feel the presence of God. Factual fervent cry of righteousness. Oh Lord. Oh, Amen. That means we got more of a chance to touch God. Yeah. And it's not just by chance that you touch him. I'm not saying that. But you will get be able to touch the Lord quicker if you're living a righteous life. Yeah. 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 And it went on, Eddie. It told us what a righteous man was. And it told us what a righteous man got that. It said Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. Uh, in other words, he was flesh and blood, just like me and you. You cut him, he could bleed, just like me and you. Yeah. He fought the same battle that me and you fight. He fought the same temptation and faced the same enemy that me and you fight. But it said he prayed that it would not rain. And it rained not. On the earth for the space of three years and six months. Talking about it, said he prayed again. He prayed again, and the heaven gave him. <laughs> the effects will further cry of a righteous man of Elizabeth. That man was living a righteous man. And God here. God did. He prayed that it wouldn't rain and it didn't rain. Then he went and prayed again that it would rain. And it did. And it did. Thank God. Well, you want God to move in things? Let's walk up right with him. And he'll move for us. But there's time that he will move out of mercy. He'll have mercy on his face. He'll move for us. Come on. He's a merciful God. He's a merciful man. But you want your prayer to obey this much. Live a righteous life. Separate yourself from the world. Coming out from the world. Be a separated man. 
be peculiar. The more that we can separate from the world, the more time we got to get closer to God. The more we pray, the closer we can get. The more we pass daily, the closer we can get. The more the word of God open that we put in our heart, the closer we can get. Now I have found out the more of the word of God that I apply to my life, it increases my faith. Because I get to apply that bit that things that happen. Yeah. That time passes. Yeah. I get to read about things, Eddie, that happened years ago. Then I get to read about that when he said I'm the same yesterday, today, and I changed. Yeah. Well, I know if he done it back then, he can do it today. He can do it today. I got but if I'm going to get God to move for me, I've got to live a righteous life. <laughs> It's not hard to do. The enemy wants to make it seem so hard. Yeah. But it says the way of a transgressor is hard. Yeah. But the effectual firm of pride and righteousness. Avail us to make it. Avail us to make it. Now, over there the other day, I was just, just pondering on that day. I was really trying to study and let it run through my mind and through my heart. I prayed and prayed and prayed, Lord, please help me understand it the way you want me to. But every time I go to read something, I would end up in that same place. Every time I'd start maybe trying to read somewhere else where I know that I was right back there again reading that same thing over. And I said, Lord, I know you want to tell me something. Help me to understand. Help me to understand. Uh, help me, Lord, to understand. Yes, amen. You may say, well, I already know that. That's good. But it takes me a little longer sometimes to understand. I try, I try, but sometimes it takes me just a little longer to get there. But if I'm going to be able to reach God, I'm going to have to be righteous. Now, that's what he's talking about. Thanks for fervent prayer of a righteous Availeth. He said a righteous. He didn't just say of a man, but a righteous. A righteous. Now you can take somebody, that don't take me long. You can take somebody that's not doing real good and they start praying and seeking power. It'll help them. The fruits will start showing if they're really praying and seeking power. When they start praying and seeking God. I'm not saying if you're not a righteous man, you can't get help. God will help you yeah. if you put forth an effort. Yeah. God will help you. Yeah. Trying to get through this thing. Yeah. But if we want it to avail us much, we're going to have to be a righteous man. A righteous man. That's just what the Word of God says. Right. Of a righteous man. Yeah. Of a righteous man. When it says a righteous man, it don't mean that a woman don't have to be righteous. She has to be righteous too. She has to be righteous too. Factual uh, fervent prayer of a righteous. Factual fervent prayer. That just means honest, true, pouring your heart out to God. Getting down, praying with your lips. It's not really going to get things done. Pray for the Lord. Put your heart into it. Yes. And touch God. Put your heart into it. And give it up. Thanks for perfect power of the righteous. Now you hear me say this before. Rejoice, say this. We'll give God the morning a little bit. Wish we could have got on a little bit. And I was telling him, Eddie, I told him several times this week on that work on the way home, at home, up here praying. Lord, get me to be a righteous man. Yes, amen. Get me, Lord, to live a righteous life. A righteous life. If we live a righteous life, I believe, I believe this, Lord. And if we, all of us, can live a righteous life, 
something comes your way, we can get down and pray and seek God. Yeah. And get something done. Yeah, it's true. Get something done. I know something is going to take us out of here. I know that. There will be something hit some of us, man, that's going to take us out. We can put it back. But when our time comes to go, we're leaving him. We're leaving him. I'm talking, we could get a fire of God and we could live a righteous life. Somebody come in here with a rope leg. Yeah. God, who wants somebody to go pray from that leg and go back to heaven? It has happened. It has happened. Uh, I just don't think it's the will of God that everybody come in seek and leave sick. I just don't believe that. Uh, it takes faith. It takes faith to get, to get it done. I believe that with all my heart. But if I'm not living a righteous life, I'm not going to have the faith working with me enough to get it done. He gave us all a measure of faith. It's in there. It's in there. But we've got to get it stirred up and move. How do we do that? We live a righteous life. We can have it move. I, I just believe that in my heart. If you don't believe it, I'm not going to follow that with you. I don't know if I'm going to follow that with you. Take so firm and cry over your And I'm not saying we don't do good. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying anybody in here don't live good. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not. But I will say we can all move up a little bit. Yeah, we can. We can move up a little bit. Sure we can. Sure we can. They say there's any that runs you sick. They say you have a certain any. Among you see, it's in call for the elder of the church. We don't see it done that way much. No. No. We don't. We slow down now. We slow down now. We slow down now. We let them call for the elder of the church. Let them pray over him, mourning him and all in the name of the Lord. All right. And I don't believe that scripture just happened to be there just by chance. Right. Or just so happened. Right. I believe it was telling us that made and telling us that fix will forever cry a righteous man a little man. And then giving us proof of what a fix will forever cry a righteous man. It was all Elias. You say, well, I thought it was Elias. The same person. The same person. So I'm in the word of God for the name to change. Same person. Same person. Don't get confused on that. <coughs> but it showed us right there. What a righteous man could get done. He got God to shut that rain off for three years and six months. Then he got God to let it rain again after three years and six months. The prophets of Baal ate him about that. I think it was around 12,000. Something like that. 12,000. Yeah. One man of God's standing right here. One righteous man standing right here. They done all their things. Cut their sins. Hurt themselves and stoned them different Tore the altars down, broke them down, tore them apart. Their God did not answer them. Did not answer them. If he had done made an agreement with them, he said that God that answered not all. Let him be God. Praise him. Yes. This was a righteous man standing there by his sin. Fleshly wise, but God was a good king. Thank God. A one righteous man standing there with all their prophets of them. Heaven, Lord. He was a righteous man. Yes, I'm trying to get, get over to us what living righteous can do for us. Yes. And if they've done all their things after so many hours, <coughs> he told some of them made it to the power of the altar, kill them back. I believe, I believe it was about 12 barrels of oil 
Or water. I'm sorry. Water. They poured it in there. Yeah. Poured it in there. Poured it in there. Poured it in there. Poured it in there. I believe it was four barrels at a time, three times as like this thing. He began to call in the name of the Lord. What happened? He didn't cut himself. He didn't tear the order all to pieces. He didn't jump up on it screaming and holler like a bunch of crazy something at it. He just called on the name of the Lord. What happened? The power of God began to fall. Yes, the power of God began to fall. Licked up all the water that was in the trench. Consumed the sacrifice. Yes, and all the prophets of Baal. Yes. Why? Because a righteous man called on the name of the Lord. Yes. A righteous man called on the name of the Lord. Yes. We want to get things done. Let's live righteous. Yeah. And call on the name of the Lord. Help him move it, man. Amen. Praise the Lord. I appreciate the Lord tonight. I love that little scripture there. I thought about it for years and years. And thought I really understand all that it was telling me, but I realized I didn't know as much as I thought I know that what it was telling me. Yeah. Did any of my music? They didn't call for the elders of Jesus. Thank God. We don't see that done. Fix your fervent pride of a righteous man of eloquence. The Word of God tells us things the way it tells us because that's the way it wants it to be done. That's the way God intended for it to be done. Yeah. That tells me ended if I want to get God to move. I've got to be a righteous man. I've got to be a righteous man. Because if I go to him, I'm trying to get that. And I've not been doing what I know to do, and I fall down there. That I've really not got the faith in my heart that I've done what I know to do because I know I did. And if I ain't got faith that I know done what I know to do, then I've not got enough faith to get God to do. Why? Because I know that I didn't do what I was supposed to. But a righteous man will be honest. And he'll say, No, Lord, you know that I've done everything. When you have. If I've not done everything, then I'm not living in righteousness in that life. But it does say in another place, too, that our righteousness is as filthy rags. That's the choice. But we still got to live a righteous life. Clean life, holy life. To get God to move. We're going to get God to move on us to take these serpents and we've got to live. Yes. We've got to live. And I'm not saying people not living good. I'm not saying that at all. And I know there's a time and a season for everything. There's a time and a season for everything. I can do better than this. I can. I can do better. And I've been praying, trying to, I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to do better. But to fix your fervent prayer of a righteous man, I found it, I'll say this, I found it that it's easier for me to touch God when I was really trying to run and do what I know to do. And it was when I was slacking around, face down, and I wasn't doing right. I had to pray and get caught up, get repented over not running right. And then try to get God to move on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it ain't always we want me and always want to have time. No. To try to repent over running slow. Things gonna hit us. See Mike, I tell him up today that I've been hearing a lot more strokes and heart attacks and cancer hitting people and I don't know, well then it's getting bad. It's getting bad. Things is going to hit us regardless. We serve God, things is going to hit us. Yeah. Trouble's going to come. Sicknesses will come. But when things do come, let us be living righteous. I thank God for being here. <coughs> Everybody,